Hi and welcome to another video series from DreamingHotRods.com. What I've done with my other videos, I've shown you how to remove some rust and surface rust by dipping it in a solution. What I want to do with this one, I want to show you something slightly different. Once we've done our panels and removed them in our, our baths or sandblasted, however, we now have to repair the actual holes or rust that's in them. And in some cases, uh, they're not major, so you don't have to go and buy another panel or whatever. But what I've got, I'm going to show you with this, what I've done to a couple of truck doors and some repairs I've done on an actual truck cabin. All I'm doing is showing you, um, I've found some donor panels, cut sections out of them and replaced them. Now if I can't do that, I'm going to show you how instead of doing a whole full door skin, like some people think if it's got rust down the bottom of the corner, you've got to replace a whole door skin. You don't have to because the rest of the metal's fine. But in one of these doors, or both of these doors actually, I've done one already and I'll show you how I'm doing the other one. I'm actually just going to repair and replace the metal on one corner section. Here's the two truck doors I'm actually going to uh, repair. One I've already completed, the one on the right hand side. Now to look at them like that, they don't look too bad. You know, The left hand one does have a dent midway where the intrusion bar is. Um, but what I want to show you, the one on the right, I've actually repaired the one down the very bottom corner. Right, You can see it right down here. Now if you look at that, I'll put a little patch in it. Now the one on the left, it's just got a skerrick of rust. So you think to yourself, between the two of them, they both had to be repaired on the corner. Here I'm going to show you what the doors are actually like on the inside, something you wouldn't normally pick up if you're going to purchase an actual a vehicle from a car yard or through um, your magazines or whatever. Now, these are the things you've got to look at. You've got to look for the evidence inside. So we can zoom right in here and look at the two doors. I've actually repaired the one on the right and I've put a little door skin. On this door here, I've already repaired the corner. And what I've done, I've just put a little section, but I've still made the actual flange fold over like original. Now, I'll show you how we do that with this door. You can see in here, the actual rust that's gone right inside on the corner panel. The lips here, obviously I'm going to have to cut them off and do exactly what I've done on this one. Now you'll also notice here I've actually welded the joins. Um, probably on a car or a restoration project I do this a bit neater but for a truck it's a, a workhorse, I'm not going to be too fast with it. Now here you can see where I've actually put in some patch panels from donor vehicles. On this, set, on this step and the actual mud guard, I've cut sections out of another truck because uh, mine were badly rusted, so I've replaced them. Here I've actually made this section itself very badly rusted, as you can see. But I mean, you can turn something that looks shabby, unusable, um, back into use again just for the simple, simple, easy ways of doing it. You can see where I've actually cut it along there. Now, removed all the paint from the work area on the inside of the door. Um, here this section is going to be cut out. On the other side, again we'll need to remove paint from our actual work areas that we're going to work on. And at the moment I'm going to be working on this corner. To do this process, of actually, I use four discs themselves. Um, this one is a great little tool, right? It's called a strip it disc. This thing, is, I've half used it now, but what it is, it's it's just fantastic for stripping off the paint only, and it does it so quickly. And I'll show you in a minute. The next version we have is a normal grinding stone. Um, this is a. Uh, 125 mil angle grinder I use, so they use a five-inch disc. So that's just a standard standard grinder, grinding stone you'll find. I don't use them too often, only to knock the tops off the welds initially. Then I'll proceed with what we call a actual flat disc. Right? These are a fantastic little tool. They don't last as long as a grinding stone. But they're an actual layers of, um, of sandpaper laid in a flat, like a fish scale form. Great. They do wear out quicker, but they leave a, a great finish. 
You can get these in various grades. I generally choose, what have I got here? I've got an 80 grit. I generally find the 80 grit's okay. If I go any coarser, so like down to a, a 40 or a 40 grade, I've had, I just tears the stones off the pads quickly. So I find the 80 seems to give us a smooth finish ready to apply our paint. And last, there's this one, is a little one mil um, five inch disc. This is a little cutting disc, really fine. I like these. Um, again, you do have to wear safety glasses with all these. Like these can break, they're that thin. As long as you're very careful with them, but and don't twist them as you're actually cutting them, because they're not. They've got a bit of flex in them, but you don't want to be, you know, have them actual snap on you. So be very careful with these ones. You can get them thicker, but I find these ones less sparks, right? Less iron filings in your in your work area. Um, they give you a neat little cut too. So I find these are great. Now I'm just going to remove the paint here with my first disc which is the strip disc. You need to get it all off in the work area itself because you don't want to do uh, burn, have the paint burn once you're welding. Um, it'll create the fumes and obviously any flames you don't want. The actual rust in the corner there, that's the brown bit you saw in the original door at the start. Uh, you can see it's got the bog in it and they've just knocked it in, filled it with bog and obviously it comes out later on. So I'm going to actually scribe um, and mark an area that I'm going to actually cut it out. I'm going to remove it completely. Now here I'm using the hard disc grinding stone just to try and knock down the edge of the door itself so I can actually separate it. This is probably a little coarse at times. But once I've done that then I'm going to cut it with my fine one mil cutting disc. Again these minimal, um, minimal sparks come from them. I just find them a lot easier to get a straight cut. Now I'm going to use my flap disc just to knock it finally off. So it uh, just gives that final trimming. Pull it off and it'll reveal the ugly mess that's inside. Look at that, pretty sad and rusted. But we'll replace all that and uh, if I was to just bog that over again, that would probably come out again in a, in a year's time or probably a little bit, a little bit more. And uh, you don't want to do that on a project, especially once you've painted them. So I'm just trimming these up. This is again with my one mil disc. I'll cut this corner out ready to uh, make up my new panel. Trim them up where you can. I'm going to trim that edge up a little bit further. And then I can sort of scribe the panel I'm going to put on it, make the curve. I have actually put a bit more meat on this panel of um, just to give it a bit more strength being a corner you just never know getting you ready to put on your actual vehicle you may drop it on the ground so I'm just going to make this corner just a bit stronger. Now I've actually tack welded my panel on with a MIG weld I just put three little spots on it but I'm actually going to wire weld it the rest of it um, the MIG can burn through if there was rust prior there so at least with a wire weld I can control it and feed more wire in to fill it up if I want. Bit of a tip here, welding wire, you might think now where can we get welding wire? Well you can use any scrap steel if you want to cut thin strips. What I do is I find a reel or go and purchase a reel from concrete suppliers, right? It's, a, it's what they tie the reinforcement together with, right? It's just, I've, I use these all the time. It lasts me for ages and they're cheap enough. You know, rather than just buying a pack with a few rods in it, that'll last me forever. Just a small tip for you there anyway, if you're looking for welding wire. Okay, so I've tack welded this corner section in. Now I'm just oxy welded in to give it a better finish. I didn't want to MIG it, as I said before. I think the MIG would be burning it away. Um, but I'll finish putting in this. Now you'll see this straight edge there. It's not straight. It's supposed to be. But I'm going to trim that up later on. This is just um, excess metal that I've left on to make it worthwhile. You can see there where I need to trim it down. That weld's not a bad weld, right? But it's got plenty of uh, strength in it. You can see there now, I'm just going to trim that up to make sure, because you've got to be careful being a corner. It's got two areas coming down to meet. You've got to try and get the angles right. So I'm just following this, you know, straight edges there, making sure they are correct. So I'll just correct it with the actual dolly, dolly and hammer. 
there you can see the penetration from the weld so it's plenty strong enough and there's the extra thickness the extra bit of metal that are left on just to give it a bit more strength as I said it is a corner and you do generally tend to drop these from time to time now I'm going to trim this uh, corner ready to accept the actual outer door skin itself just trim them up make them square or just run it along the edge as you, can, as you see what I'm doing there now clean them up any burrs etc I'm going to be putting a skin over the top of this so I'm just making sure there's no burrs on it now I've actually traced the corner onto this panel of steel and you'll notice here I have cut an actual 45 degree angle because that's what you've got to do to fold the actual lips over these drawings here are actually of my lips so I'll be cutting along the outer edge and this one here is just a guide to fit up to my panels so here I'll trim it down to suit once I've cut it out of this piece here Now here's trial fitting of my little panel. Just make sure your edges are true and you've got minimal gap. Now notice this has got a slight curve to it. I've had to put that in by bending over either my knee or a pipe because it's got to match the panel because the panel does have a slight curve. Once it's correct, I'm actually just spot welding it with a MIG. I'm going to start in the inner corner. Then I'm going to work my way to the edges. Once the spots are done, I'm actually going to fill between each spot weld as you can see I don't want to do it completely in one hit I'm actually cooling it down with some air between each stage this just minimizes the warpage then clean it up with the grinder once you've uh, knocked the most of the hard edges off to knock the lip over I'm hitting it on the very edge to start with that's just, just pulling the lip over I've clamped it on the corner just to hold it together Now I've turned the door around, finishing off this edge, and again I'm just hitting the lip itself, not the actual panel. Now with my dolly, I've actually got it on the edge. All right. Now if I was to hit this from the other side, did it reverse and have the hammer on the opposite side, I'll be putting dents in my panel. That's why you hit the actual lip on this side. Make sure your top edge is straight in line with the rest of the door's edge before you knock it over too actually. That way you can actually knock the lip back up and uh, correct it to make sure it is straight. Now you'll notice I've done my 45 degree cut how it's all come into the corner and made a neat little area. Nice, nice looking finish. And the actual edge of your door trim always try to get the dolly on an angle not as severe as that but just to give you an example never rest it flush try and, you only need it slightly so you know the pressure of the dolly is actually on the edge that way you can actually you're not actually hitting it in here you're only hitting it on the edge to actually squash and pinch that lip together you don't need to actually go too hard and destroy it but as long as you know you've got your flowing curve and line on this side by keeping it on the edge that stops damaging that so we just need to run along the edge as you can see here all I need to do now is just a bit more trimming up and weld all those joins just just to, that'll lock it in completely and stop any um, opening up well there we have it hopefully that shows you how you can do a a repair on your own door without having to throw them away so you know it took me um, three hours in total to do it um, so you should be able to achieve the same results so I hope that's helped and uh, all the best with your project thank you